What's up, shoot the gap? It's just me, the gut tonight. It's just me by myself. By myself. Brian, the amigo Baldwin, is at the uh, Texans uh, fan council meeting. So it's going to be just me tonight. And I'm going to give y'all the waiver wire, my, my picks, as well as the start and sit for Thursday's game. This is the 169th nice episode in this hopeful year of our Lord. And uh, yeah, you know, this is going to be short and concise. Uh, you're definitely not going to be able to start this and then have it go on for your whole run. So sorry, Emo. But uh, I my pickup of the week, man, um, I know he's probably being taken in most leagues by this point, but Kareem Hunt, if he's out there, uh, obviously he needs to be your number one pickup. Uh, he looked great and the Browns are trending up. And they actually seem to be doing better when Watson isn't there. It seems to be a more predictable offense. And, uh, you know, they're not going to run as much, so they're going to throw more of their running backs, which is great for Hunt. Number two, uh, Darrell Henderson Jr., you know, for the Los Angeles Rams. Looks like he's going to be the guy, uh, at least until the rookie comes back. And, you know, if he proves himself, might be a timeshare, but... Uh, in terms of a rental ru running back, he's golden. Uh, coming in at number three, JSN, the rookie, Jackson Smith and Jigba, the Seahawks. Uh, he looked freaking great on Sunday. He already had the most targets for the team. His first, you know, kind of start as the guy. Yeah, there was another Seahawks wide receiver who also got a touchdown, but I wouldn't be worried about that too much because um, he was a rookie after all. So getting the most targets as a rookie is still really great. Number four, this might be kind of a cutesy thing, but I think it's a pretty good move. Uh, and that is Devin Singletary for the Texans. He's actually looking better than Pierce whenever you look at the numbers right now. And the Texans just came out of a bye. So they could be looking to go a different direction than Pierce coming out of that bye. Um, you know, Pierce was the guy whenever Levy Smith was here, but Levy Smith left, and shortly after, you know, D'Amico Ryan's came, and then Devin Singletary came. So, it seems like Ryan's might be more of a Singletary kind of guy. He did come from that Shanahan tree as well, so it's worth noting Shanahan's always kind of an RBBC guy until he has Christian McCaffrey, and obviously Devin Singletary isn't him. Unless he is, as a Texans fan, I hope he is. But I think it's at least a good pickup because he could be the guy. He at least seems to be doing better with the opportunities he's been given than Pierce does. And I love Pierce, so that's hard for me to say. Um, this is also really cheeky, but I've been having kicking troubles all year. I've been having kicker troubles. So I've been looking at good kickers. Uh, and Fairbair, Fairbair is coming off of a bye this week so he might be available pick him up he's been like the best kicker for fantasy this year last time i checked now as far as people not to pick up uh julio jones i know he's a name i know he sounds cool but he only had one catch for three yards on his first game in and he's still going to be fourth in the pecking order i have him behind dallas goddard Goddard's doing really good. I know the Amigo isn't a big fan of him, but, you know, he's been doing really good. Also, Joshua Kelly running back for the Chargers. If you're just chasing points, I know he did great on Sunday, but don't chase that. Those points are hard to come by. Now, as far as the start sit for Thursday's game, we have the Bucks at the Bills. Uh, not really a lot to go over. Um, for the Bills, we're starting Allen Diggs. Cook, we're starting those three guys. Those three guys are set and forget. If you don't think those guys are good enough to set and forget, then trade them to me because I want them on my team. And you obviously aren't valuing them high enough. Uh, Davis, yeah, he's had two shitty games in a row after having a really good streak. But um, I really do think he's due. I thought about it, and what I chop it up is to... 
kind of a weird game script um, last game, and the Bills kind of just took away, or the the Patriots kind of took away Davis and Diggs. So Allen just had to kind of go to Kincaid and the other guys all day. The Bills also play with their food. Like, they think, like, Sean McDermott's a defensive coach, so he always gets cute, and he thinks that, oh, like, I can be defensive, and that will win me games. But it's like, no, Allen is sloppy, so it's like you need to you need to flex your muscles and put up as many points as possible, but they never do that. Um, but I would start Gabe Davis. I would also start the Bills D just because Baker's sloppy and he's not that good. He's not that smart and he's kind of small. So, you know, the Bills D can probably do good against him. And uh, if you have the Bills kicker, you're starting him. I would start him if I, if I had Tyler Bass. As far as the Bucks, it's pretty easy. Um, I wouldn't be starting Baker this game. If I have Evans, I'm setting and forgetting. I'm always starting him. Um, and I would start White this game. He's actually looking good. And I think his work as a receiver uh, bails him out. You should definitely start him in any PPR formats. Um, half PPR, I don't know, maybe not. And then Godwin is a desperation flex play. Uh, much more so if we're in a 12 to 14 man league format. But that's about it. Uh, those are my picks. Um, yeah. Love y'all. Peace.